Okay, I'll um, I'll start with a good reference waveform. It's always a good idea to start with known good something, get a bit of a baseline. So I'll just drag it and drop it into the compression waveform viewer. Several ways you can open it. You can also just open it this way. If the um, waveform's too large for the screen, we've got a, a zoom tool down here. If you click that, you can take a bite. It gives you a little bit more accurate square capture to work with. It's not necessary, you can leave it as is, but I find sometimes it's nice to, to zoom in a little bit. So we pull up our cursors first, we're going to mark out 720 degrees. So we try to get our cursor as close to the peak as possible. Doesn't matter if you're not exact. Close is good. So that's our 720. In the settings you can actually tell the, um, the program what distance your markers are going to be apart. You can have a custom or 360 or the 720 which is what we usually work with. So first thing I want to mention is I'll just zoom back out for a second. When this intake valve closes, our exhaust valve is closed so we build compression. There should be no air escaping from the combustion chamber during that time. And the same all the way down here, our intake and our exhaust valves are still closed until we get to here and the exhaust valve opens. So this is, this is an important thing to remember. There should be no leak, so whatever volume or pressure of air you've got in the cylinder at this point here before the valve intake valve closes, we should have the same amount when we come down to here before the exhaust valve opens. Okay, so if we just, I've moved my waveform, so I'll just put up my markers again. One of the things this can do is, this means that this should be a completely symmetrical tower. Should have the same amount. So if we, I've got, there's little cursors here. We've got vertical line we can move around and we've also got horizontal ones down here in the bottom bottom right corner just clicking on the little box will bring them out so in theory this point here doesn't matter where you put that red line the distance from this point here to here and from here to here should be the same if it's a symmetrical tower and no leaking has taken place during this compression and expansion event. So what I've done is I've created this compression tower mirror overlay and what it does if we place the cursor in the middle of the tower it's going to take a snapshot of this tower and it's going to take one half this half of the, of the cursor this side and it's going to flip it over and superimpose it over the other half and theoretically if there's been no leaks in compression during the whole event or two events they should superimpose pretty closely this is a known good waveform I put the cursor up so if I click the tower mirror you can see how how they mirror one another all the way up and all the way down there's a little bit of variation there sometimes you expect that depending on the vehicle some of them will be spot on some of them not so much so you can actually move, if they don't superimpose perfectly, you can move these around. The idea is to get that, there's two black lines there, and to have them sitting right on top of one another, and that gives us our, our mirror. So there's actually two, two there, sitting one right over the top of the other. Okay, um, you can turn the mirror off. That's just, the, that's just the tower on its own, and there it is with the superimposed. But um, obviously they've got to be right, right on top of one another like that to get a, an accurate view. There's also an opac opacity adjustment there, so if you want to 
zoom in. So that's just showing showing the one. The mirror image is not visible. You can tell by the little red dots here. So we're only seeing one overlay at the moment as we start to bring it in. The idea is to have those two red boxes about the same same visibility and that tells us that they're transparent enough that you're seeing both one over the other. Okay, so that's the compression tower button here. Now we've got our, our degree markers here. We can turn we can change our, our 30 degree uh, if I can remember where it is. <laughs> Somewhere here. Uh, text box. Shocking. I should remember where this stuff is. Uh, I might have turned it. Disabled it in this version. Well, it appears I have. Okay, well this version doesn't doesn't have it. Used to be able to turn off the um the thirty degree markers, but it looks like I've decided for some reason to make it inclusive. So so these are thirty degree markers and one eighty degree markers. One point you're probably aware of um, while we're talking about this is the the one eighty point here. Um, this is something that um, Bernie Thompson from Automotive Test Solutions discovered a while back is this this point here right near the top of the ramp the exhaust ramp we should see this intersecting point at 180 so if it's a little bit down here or over here that can be an indicator of advanced and retarded timing so we like to see just around this little point just before we get to the top of the ramp and go onto the exhaust plateau we like to see this intersecting of the 180 Another one is, is 30 degrees after our 360. So this point here, this line here, usually is, is the same. Just at the end of the intake pull event, we should see an intersection here on this, on this downward, towards the bottom, very close to the bottom. And we should, should see it pull complete intake vacuum before 45 degrees. So that's 30 and that's 60. So we can see it's, it's pulled that intake before the 45 degrees. These are some rules of thumb. Okay, so once you've marked these cursors, the 0 and 720, you don't need to keep them up. You can actually take that away if it's if it's bothering you. It's it's remembered the, the values, so it'll still put things in the correct spot. So I'll, I'll just leave them up for the time being and try to make this screen a little, a little bit messier. So that's our, that's our cursors for our to set for our vertical measurements. So it needs to know that to put the correct degrees within that period. Um, so these cursors won't be accurate with their degree measurements. I should make these lines a bit thicker. We can do that in the settings. So there's our zero. Somewhere around here we're going to see our 360. And we can go beyond the line of course. We can have our negative values. But they won't be accurate until you've got that 720 marked out. And we can turn those values off. Down here we've got show values. We turn that off so there's no longer any values. Um, perhaps you might not be actually measuring. You might be just using them as markers. So you can turn those values off. To get rid of the cursor, you just drag it all the way off the screen until it touches the red box and it'll disappear. Okay, our flags. So we've seen our market, our cursors, our, our, our increments. Now our flags, again, work off the positioning. The cursors have to be set first. A lot of the measurements are going to come off these two, the zero, 0 and 720 degree cursors. Um, our flags are going to pop up at the measurements in these boxes. So our intake valve opens at 10, intake valve closes at 45, EVO at 40, and EVC at 10. By putting these flags up, it'll show you where exhaust valve should open and you can see that's fallen pretty close to the mark. Intake valve closed, pretty close to the mark. These are only, yeah, I've called it standard, but it's, it's I took a, a huge collection of CAM data figures, CAM specs, and I tried to find the average, the typical, the standard, and these were, this is what we came up with. 
And we've also got one in there for performance cam. If you watch the flags, when I select that, the flags will shift. And this is the overlap period, which is enormous. Um, and the, um, the valve opening events for a, a high performance cam. I mean, obviously, that's an enormous cam. Um, big overlap, that thing had idled terribly. So that's just two, two standards I've put in there. Oh, by the way, there's also this box here to show the valve info. So if we click on that, it brings up a box here that we can move around just to get into sight. And it shows us these figures, plus our overlap, which is obviously here, and our duration events, which is from here to here and here to here. So it's just done a bit of quick math for you just to, to show you those values. Now, to move the flags, you can either punch in the numbers here. So we'll change this to 20 and you watch the IVO move. So I've just put in 20 degrees. If that's obviously before top dead center, which is here. Or you can just click on the flag itself and you can move it and you'll see the values down here will move as you move the flag. So you've got two ways of doing it. So for example, if you wanted to just line it up by the waveform and find out what degrees that's at, you can do that. So you know, if you put it, put it about here, you know, it's showing. 41. Okay, so they can be all moved around to wherever you like. You can change in the settings, well, depending on the version you're using. We've got sizes here. So the cursors are these here. At the moment they're only one. That's why they're so hard for me to grab and move. And we've got minor and major degree increments. And there's our flags. We've also got a, a couple of fonts we can change here. The font on our flags and for our pressures and so forth. Okay. I won't change any of that now that I've already said it. So that's the two ways of moving the flags, either in the boxes themselves or by the flag itself. And they'll update. So moving the flag updates the values, updating the values moves the flags. And if you happen to, um, well, what else have we got here first? Um, so we'll, I'll, I might just turn that box off. I'll turn the flags off. Right. We've also got, we can measure our pressures. So this, this is our, our other flags here for our pressure cursors. We need three points here. We need to know our a value below zero. Don't have to put a negative in. So what I, what I like to do is I'll pick. So we've got a line here in the grid from the picoscope and it shows 20.2. For convenience, I'll keep the cursors way off the out of the waveforms way and I'll line them up with those lines. So we've got 20.2. If we enter that into there, then we need our zero value. This isn't editable. This line, this box here doesn't change. We just move that line to the zero. Unfortunately, it doesn't fall dead smack on a line, but we've got 0.4 there, so roughly there would be somewhere around there would be zero, maybe a little bit up. So that's about zero going off this here. Oh, hang on, I'm on the wrong side. So that's negative, zero, so up here would be zero. And the other one, the same up here, we've got a maximum. We'll get it off the screen, so I'll pick the 68.69, and we'll just enter in that 68.69. So now the program knows the distance between these two, these two, oh, and the, the whole three in sequence knows what the distance is, and can do a bit of math. So we can Turn all these cursors off. Now that we've gridded or marked out our waveform, we can turn those off and the values will still be accurate. So if we, we pull up a pressure cursor, we can look here. If we pull that up to there, we can see that we pulled 21 inches of, of vacuum during this event. Now you'll notice here that it pulls deeper in the exhaust pocket. This is not always a bad thing. In this particular vehicle, I can't remember, what, it's a Yankee vehicle, I can't remember what it was, but it has been discussed in forums that this is p typical of this vehicle for some reason that it, it, it seems to pull, well, it doesn't make sense to me, but they've, they've proven it, that it pulls a deeper pocket, exhaust pocket here than it does intake. And, and that's, that's an exception to the rule. Normally you'll find what they start with before the compression event, is what they end with after the compression event, all things being equal and there was no loss in vacuum, uh, in pressure. Um, so under the zero line, it's going to show us inches of mercury. And as soon as we go above the zero line, 
it'll start showing us pressure. See that? So we've got PSI, and then we go into inches. So we can move it anywhere on the on the waveform. So that's 62 PSI there. You can pull up as many of these as you want. So there's our zero PSI point there. Now you, it's not important how many you pull up. It's not really necessary to have that many up, but you know if you want to really dissect the waveform, you can have as many as you want. So that's showing three measurements there. The same over here. We've got our degrees. We can move that to any point. It's remembered where the cursors were, so you can see there it knows no zeros there, and we can move as many of these as we like around. Now if you're moving to the left, the numbers will be on the right, and if you're moving to the right, the numbers will be on the left. I did that on purpose to give, give it a, a bit of, a bit of um, help it make it clearer to read when you've got cursors close together. You can, you can come in from, from the left of this one knowing that the numbers will be on the right and they're not going to sit over the top of each other. So if you ended up doing something like that, you'd, you'd end up with this jubbly mess. So by going away from it and coming back from the other direction, you can keep them visible from one another. Okay. Right, so as far as, that's a, a known good one. Let's just have a, a look at um, look at what happens if we deal with a, a bad one. Just close that. What I've, what I've also got in the options is uh, this won't work if you've got your security settings up high, but you can you can actually select an image, right click on it, and open with Compression Waveform Viewer. So it automatically opens up the waveform for you. But that'll depend on the settings in your control panel whether you can get away with that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on this one. Source for our event doesn't look real pretty there, does it? So we'll pull up our cursors. and our tower and you can see here how lopsided it is this is showing that we've got leakage taking place between the, the start of the compression event and by the time we get to the end of the expansion event you can see that there's been a, a variation in, in the pressure it's, it's lost pressure somewhere okay so that's a lopsided example no, this is the one you uh, um, you sent me the other day, uh, opening compression waveform viewer. Because it's a black screen, I, I find it a little difficult to, to play with. So what I've done is I've, I've created a, an invert button. So if you click on that, it'll take the black and turn it into white. So there's our same waveform, just a little easier, in my opinion, a little easier to view. So I've clicked on the zoom. We'll select a 720. It's so probably zoomed in a little much, but it's still okay. And we can do the same again. We can mark out our two points. Always start with that. I'm going to make those cursors bigger, I think. I might do it. So we go into settings, size, cursor. We'll make that a two. You can see they're a bit thicker now, a bit easier to grab onto. Okay, so if we look here, straight away we see that it's not intersecting as the ramp comes up. Remember we said that it should, should be intersecting that 180 degree point about here. It's not doing that. And you can see here just at the bottom of the intake we should have been inter intersecting that 30 degree marker here. So it suggests that the, the, the whole thing is happening too early. Looks like advanced timing. What I've also got is um, we, can, we can add some overlays. If we click on this overlay button here it brings up a, an overlay window with an orange border. At the moment there's nothing in it, it's just clear. Up here we've got a control window. We can select an image. And we can find a known good one, for example. We know this is a known good waveform. 
and we could resize that waveform to superimpose it over, over yours. I've just made the other window a bit smaller so I've got a bit more. I find this is sometimes quite handy to get an idea of whether a, a waveform's happening in the places where you'd expect it to happen. But, um, so we can see we've, we've got over the top of the, the exhaust event, uh, the compression event. You can see here, um, obviously, different different um, scaling is going to vary this, but I quite often just just manipulate it around until I get the majority of it to match up, and it gives you sometimes gives you a bit of an idea of, of what's going on with the culprit waveform. Okay, uh, cursors off. So I've looked at degrees, flags, looked at the pressure, cursors, tower. That's our overlay. Oh, by the way, when you've got the overlay up, if you decide you want to, this is not an example that you would do this with. It's pretty ordinary sort of an example, but you might have it one sitting over the other, and you think that'd make a good good sample image to show somebody. You can actually click this merge button, and it'll merge the two images together. So now that that has now become one image, and you could. Say, for example, you could add notes to it. Might want to put an arrow in. So draw an arrow pointing to here and here. There's our arrow. We can add some text. Click return, it'll go on to the next line. You can click on this box and move it around. You can actually remove the box while it's selected. So we've selected that box, we can click on the on the delete with the A. It's got a cross with an A. That'll delete that. And we've also got the arrows, of course, we can delete the arrows. It's also got a, a shapes box there where you could say you could circle something. So we might just put a circle around that and then yeah, maybe put a a comment about it. Uh, something like that. And then when you're finished, you can save all that. You can either print it out, or you can save the whole screen. You can save it to a file or save it to clipboard. So if we save to file, it'll ask us where to save it. We can give it a name, and then we can save it. And there's our sample up here. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? Now, if you've got... Um, you got a waveform. What do we have? I think we were working with yours. We'll just pick pick the bad one. So we've got a waveform, and we're not sure about the compression specs. No, we talked about moving them around and adding values here, but I've also added the option to have a database of cam cards. So if you've um, you're not sure what this vehicle's valve events should be at. You know, you might get on Google and have a bit of a search around and you'll find find the data and you might want to store it for later. So we've got our standard and performance that I showed you, which are preset, but then we've got other. If we click other, it'll open up a, a database. And this is a, a collection that I've that I've built over a bit of time. And these are our IVO, IVC, EVO and EVC for different vehicles. So we could um, we might have it in here, for example, I think yours was a Nissan Pulsar. We can click on the columns to sort by name, so we'll sort by make. And we'll go down to Nissan. And we've got a Nissan Pulsar there, so we can click on that. And that's pulled those specs through. Okay. So you can add to that database. So we go back into the other, pull up the database. We could add new. We could select the vehicle. Um, and then we could add our own specs here. So for example, if we went online, we might find here we've got, got a Chevy small block here. Um, our intake valve opens at 10, closes at 44. So we could put in 10, 44. And 
got that wrong, didn't I? Opens at 59 and closes at 5. So that's added that to the database. So there it is there, we can pull that up and those specs will come through. Also in regards to that, sometimes they don't give you the full four specs, they'll only give you center line values. We've got a little button here we can click and that'll open up a calculator that'll calculate our IVO, FVC, EVO and EVC by using the center line and duration in the CAM specs. So here's another one I opened a little while ago and you can see this one from Melling. They show our duration and they show our center line. So we've got 223 for our durations and 110 and 118. So if we just punch those numbers in, 223 and our intake center line was 110 and our exhaust was 118 and we can see here it's calculated from those numbers our events so we can accept that give it a name and we can add that to the database so if you look down there for tester there's our specs so that's the one we just did then Okay, I think that's about it. Oh, and if you've, if you've moved it around to a point, you know you're working on a good car and you've, you're confident with your placement of your flags and you've marked it all out and you want to add that to the database, there's your values. You can just click the Save button here and that'll save it. It'll pop up the CAM card. Just put the numbers in here already. You can just enter your vehicle details and you can add that to your database as well. So you can, you can build your own CAM cards. I think I've got just about everything. Okay. Good luck.